you know, the one that we mustn't con ourselves with, you know, and you can read newspaper reports every week that say the economy has done much better during the pandemic than anybody predicted. Well, yeah, that's because our national debt's gone from one trillion to two trillion. I mean, it is government money that has kept the economy afloat um, and we just cannot go on borrowing as we are. So... Hello and welcome to this Week in Review with Nigel Farage. Nigel, are we going to get our Freedom Day or not? Well, it's an odd one, isn't it? Because it was much vaunted, you know, that this was the big moment. Life would go back to normal. We're going to put it all behind us. But it does not feel like that at all. Uh, the NHS app. And apparently, if I'm sitting in this room with a thick wall behind me, and Nick, you're sitting on the other side of that wall, so we could be in a block of flats. Uh, but if I'm still within about 10 feet of you, I'm still going to get pinged. I mean, that's how efficient this wretched app is. Now, I've never signed up for the app, um, and I'm, I'm not going to encourage people uh, to take it off their phones if they've got it. But uh, it is taking caution uh, to an extreme level. Half a million workers last week uh, pinged and sent home. Uh, Nissan, Rolls-Royce, uh, looking like that they may have to halt production completely because of all these people who are suffering from no symptoms whatsoever, but they've been pinged, they've got to stay at home. Um, so that's a concern. Uh, as for getting rid of face masks, forget it. You know, the local supermarkets would insist that you have face masks. Uh, whether the pubs get back to any more normality, we'll have to see. I guess that'll be establishment by establishment. Um, but I, it, oh, by the way, 840,000 school kids off last Friday. <laughs> I mean, we're actually, we're actually far from Freedom Day, we're locking down, just that no one's really admitting it. And from Boris, we, we, we I mean, look, I know it's not easy to lead the country through something like this. It's jolly tough. Um, and yes, you know, one's got to admit over 40,000 cases a day, hospital, hospitalizations are rising, not alarmingly, but they are rising. But what, from the government, what we're getting are complete mixed messages. So the idea that on Monday, we're all going to throw our hats in the air and cheer and celebrate our freedom. And by the way, what right have they got to tell me it's Freedom Day? I mean, do they own my liberty? Are they doing me a favour, these people? I mean, I can't stand the implication of the phrase itself. Uh, I think the truth of it is, uh, people are going about their normal lives as best they can. I think people are assessing risk for themselves. Uh, and, and frankly, given that we've all been double vaccinated or, you know, over a certain age, 85% of us have been double vaccinated, um, either this vaccine works or it doesn't. Because if you're telling me that we've all had all this and we streaked ahead of our European rivals, uh, and yet we're not taking advantage of that economically, then what the hell is going on? So I think that Monday, is, going to be quite, is actually going to be quite a confusing day for many people. Um, and the idea that somehow the economy booms on Monday and it's the roaring 20s, I, I just don't buy it. I really just don't buy it. And you know, the one thing we mustn't con ourselves with, you know, and you can read newspaper reports every week that say the economy's done much better during the pandemic than anybody predicted. Well, yeah, that's because our national debt's gone from one trillion to two trillion. I mean, it is government money that has kept the economy afloat. Um, and we just cannot go on borrowing as we are. So, uh, I, you know, for all the waves of economic optimism, um, I, I'm feeling a bit more cautious than that. One of the other things that's booming alongside government debt is inflation. The UK's inflation statistics came out and they were concerning, but it's the US that has absolutely yeah. soaring inflation at this point, more than 5%. The month on month figure was 0.9% for both core and for headline. So, you know, the inflation rate there on a month to month basis is now in double digits if you analyze it, put between double digits rates of inflation on a month over month basis. So things might actually be getting completely out of control on the inflation side. At what point are you getting worried? Here's the real problem, Nick. If I'm right that this huge economic boom that everyone's expecting doesn't quite materialize, but inflation is there within the economy, and you and I have discussed this before on this podcast, you know, I've quoted. Inflation is a disease of money caused by government and, and, and catching diseases is easy. Getting rid of them can be quite a slow and painful process. So we could even be talking about, I mean, I don't want to scare everybody, but we could even be talking about stagflation, where you have a stagnant 
economy in terms of growth, but inflation is running away. I mean, that would be the worst possible outcome, but I can't discount that completely. Well, being in lockdown and having these rolling lockdowns would be you know, the perfect example of a stagflation environment where the economy can't grow, but prices are soaring because of shortages and you know, the costs of doing business and the costs of transport and so on. So I think what we've got is stagflation where the economy is, <coughs> even though it is, you know, re it's sort of recovering and the, the growth rates are high as part of that recovery, at some point we're going to hit these shortages, uh, these yeah. food shortages, these costs of transport, electricity prices, all that's going to come back. And that's where the stagflation risk hits. Yeah, no, you're right. I mean, we, we, you know, we may well be in a form of it now, but we're just deluding ourselves because of the sheer scale across the Western world of government money being pumped into the economy. So no, I think you make a very valid point. One of the most interesting arguments about Brexit is that the EU is taking this turn towards some very bad policies. And I think a lot of the, the motivation for the Brexit vote was not what the EU is, but where it's going over time. And we've seen a new, a new direction that they've taken in all these green taxes and, and you know, carbon tax and all these sorts of green policies. And they're trying to convince the world that their, their policies are not a tax. And they're actually looking at then taxing entry of goods into the EU if yeah. those goods have involved some sort of pollution. So this is a great example of how you know, the UK could have gotten itself into trouble if we weren't escaping from this system. Yeah, the EU is a high tax, high regulation, protectionist club. It's not about free trade, as they told us for 50 years. It's quite the reverse. And you see this with a very protectionist uh, concept on green taxes. And it's also subjective, isn't it, as to what particular product is good or bad for the environment. I mean, in Islington, you see, they don't buy cow's milk anymore because that's bad for the environment. They buy almond milk. Oh, yes, darling. It's just so much better for the environment, not realizing, actually, that to produce the almonds in California uses huge amounts of energy and vast amounts of water. And then the product, you know, has to be shipped 6,000 miles. So, you know, when you start drilling down into all of this, you often find some different answers. It's the same with electric cars. You know, what are we going to do with all the lithium batteries? Has anybody come up with any, any idea how we can safely recycle them? Not that I can see. So a lot of this stuff is, I mean, is there a genuine concern about the climate? Yes, there is. And are these horrendous number of deaths that we're seeing in Germany and across the low countries in the last 48 hours, that'll all be attributed to climate change. Of course it will. Uh, but to choose what is a good product and what is a bad product is not quite as simple as people think. And, and I, I keep repeating the point when it comes to the UK and our approach to this, you know, I'm an environmentalist, a genuine environmentalist. I'm a shooting, fishing environmentalist. I believe there is a relationship between man and nature and the many things we can do so much better. But you know, we are going down the same route as the EU in some ways, maybe not with the taxes on goods coming in, but you know, you can see from Boris's strategy, this is very, very high on their list. You know, our boilers need replacing and all the rest of it. And you know, just, get, just, just get this into your head. 1% of global CO2 emissions come from the United Kingdom. And whilst we're doing all these things that have seen steel making, chemical making, refining, leaving our country and going to other parts of the world. So actually, it, the same amount of carbon is being released. It's just not being released here. Uh, whilst the Chinese will build 100 coal fired power stations this very year. And so I just... Now, whenever I say these things, I'm told that I'm a climate change denier, that I'm, I'm condemning my children to disaster. Um, but I just want to get some sensible facts on the table. And I, you know, you, know, you know, frankly, frankly, India, China, uh, between them, are about a third of the world's CO2 emissions. And unless those countries do something, frankly, there isn't much the rest of us can do. And that's the honest, to me, mathematical conclusion. I hope I don't get you into any sort of legal trouble, but how will you be spending your Freedom Day? Well, down the boozer, obviously. <laughs> well, actually, we've got a heat wave coming. We've got, after a month of shocking weather, we've got a heat wave coming. It's going to be up in the 30s on Sunday. Um, and I'm going to go and sit in a pub garden uh, somewhere. But, but, but to be honest with you, Nick, I'm not really celebrating on Monday because I see the numbers exploding even though very few of those who are diagnosed with this even suffer any symptoms. 
Uh, and I have a feeling that a very cautious government will have us locked down again back in September. Uh, and, and I hope I'm wrong, but everything tells me that's where we're going. And I think it will surprise absolutely no one. Nigel, thanks for joining me. And thanks for joining me, everyone at home.